Hey lifers, Dustin here, and today I'm excited to talk about my very first Eliminators video, as in who is actually eliminated from national championship consideration, as well as conference and division titles. Now I've read blogs about teams that are eliminated for years now, and I've just never thought of doing one myself, but that changes during this, between week 9 and week 10 of the 2016 season. Now how I've decided this, it kind of depends. So for division titles, if you got three losses and there's like two undefeated teams in your division, you're done. You just are done right now that you don't really have a chance. If you're in the national championship picture and you are at like ranked 20th with two or three losses, you're probably done. You probably don't have a shot to get in the top four. And in fact, when I talk about the actual national championship worthy candidates, I'm going to expand the field a little bit. Some of them I already think are pretty much done, but are just one loss or one other team losing away from being totally out of it. Now, with that being said, I'm going to start with the conferences first and talk about each division, and then I will do national championship at the very end, so make sure to stay tuned for that. We'll start in the ACC, and we'll start at the Atlantic Division, where number two ranked Clemson currently sits undefeated not only in the national race, but 5-0 in ACC play. Now, the Tigers already have their two biggest hurdles out of the way, beating Louisville earlier in the season at home and beating Florida State this past weekend on the road in Tallahassee. What that means is Florida State got its third conference loss. They're done. Louisville is currently sitting at 5-1 and in the conference, but Clemson at 5-0 and controls their own destiny and, in fact, can actually lose two of their three remaining ACC games and still stay in this thing. Question is, will they even lose one? Their three remaining ACC games are against Syracuse, Wake Forest, and Pittsburgh, and they will be favored in all three. But again, they can lose one and still be okay. If Louisville messes up and loses, which they almost did against Virginia this past weekend, they're done, and Clemson will basically clinch the ACC Atlantic Division title with a win over Pittsburgh on November 12th. For Louisville, well, they need Clemson to lose two conference games, and that's probably not going to happen. But just for the sake of things, we're keeping them in it until Clemson beats Syracuse on Saturday. Now, the ACC Coastal is a little more entertaining. Virginia Tech and North Carolina are both sitting at 4-1 and one in the conference, but of course, Virginia Tech holds the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. Pittsburgh is 2-2, two and two, but their two losses are to Virginia Tech and North Carolina, so they're pretty much out of it, but really not until next week can we officially rule them out. To win the Coastal, Virginia Tech simply needs to win out. Their last three division games and last three conference games are against Duke, Virginia, and Georgia Tech. Win, and you're making a trip down to Orlando to likely face Clemson, which doesn't really sound like much of winning. North Carolina's hope is that Virginia Tech loses another game and North Carolina wins out. They win their three games, two of which are also against Duke and Georgia Tech, but they trade Virginia, who they've already beaten, with NC State. If Virginia Tech loses and North Carolina wins out, then it's North Carolina in a rematch in the ACC Championship game against Clemson. If North Carolina loses any of those three games, Virginia Tech likely is heading down to Orlando. If North Carolina loses any of those three games, it's likely Virginia Tech that's heading down to Orlando. Next, let's take a look at the Big Ten East, and boy, could this get fun. Michigan is 5-0. Obviously, if they run the table and win out, they win the division, they're heading to Indianapolis. The question becomes, what if they lose? Obviously, the most interesting scenario is that they lose to Ohio State in the big game, and Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan all finish in the East, at identical 8-1 conference records. At that point, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the tiebreaker goes to the highest ranked team in the college football playoff committee, which if Ohio State beats Michigan, you have to assume is Ohio State. If Ohio State beats Michigan and Penn State loses another conference game, then the head-to-head -head obviously goes to Ohio State as well, so both Michigan and Ohio State control their own destiny. What Penn State needs is probably not going to happen. They need Michigan to lose at least one conference game and then probably have Ohio State beat Michigan and give Michigan a two-loss Big Ten record, in which case only them and Ohio State would sit there with one loss in the division. The Big Ten West right now is a mess. Nebraska is currently the only West team with only one conference loss, 
but it was against another West team in two-loss Wisconsin. But if Nebraska can navigate through the rest of the season, including beating number six, I believe, Ohio State, then they will get the automatic bid for the West into Indianapolis to face either Michigan. It'll probably be Michigan. Iowa, Minnesota, Northwestern, and Wisconsin all have two conference losses. Nebraska's already lost to Wisconsin, but they did beat Northwestern. So, games with Iowa and Minnesota still sit on the calendar, but only after a meeting with Ohio State. As far as those other four teams, a lot of them still have to play each other, so that will settle itself out. Really, I think it's Wisconsin or Nebraska in the West, but I could be wrong. In the Big 12, suddenly Oklahoma, who had two losses early in the season and looked like goners, find themselves with an undefeated Big 12 conference record at 5-0. The problem for the Sooners is that their last three games of the season are against the three teams that currently only have one loss, and that is against Baylor, West Virginia, and Oklahoma State. West Virginia, Baylor, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State end the season playing each other, so this game, or this division, could very well go down to the wire. Did I say division? That's out of habit. This conference, they don't have divisions. There's a very real possibility we do not find out the Big 12 champion until December 3rd. In the Pac-12 North, it will be decided by the Apple Cup. Currently, number 5 Washington is undefeated, including a 5-0 record in Pac-12 play. But, two-loss Washington State is also undefeated in the conference. Even if one of those teams, and let's be honest, we're probably talking about Washington State, ends up losing between now and November 26th, there's still a decent chance that that game matters. If a one-loss Washington State team beats Washington, they will own the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, and they will be the North Division champions. The South is a little bit more complicated. Technically, it's a three-way race between Colorado, Utah, and USC. The Buffaloes are the only Pac-12 South team to have a conference loss, and only one conference loss, but that one loss was against USC, who is with Utah sitting there with two conference losses. If Utah obviously wins out and beats Colorado in the Pac-12 finale on their last date of the year, then Utah will have head-to-head -head tiebreakers over Colorado and USC and will be the South Division champions. If Colorado wins out and beats Utah, obviously they're the only team with one loss, they are the South Division champions. What USC has to shoot for is that Utah beats Colorado, but Utah loses another game, therefore giving them three losses. Colorado and USC are the only teams with two division losses, and thus USC with the head-to-head -head tiebreaker gets into the Pac-12 championship game. In the SEC East, it's Florida. Like, it's pretty much Florida. They're the only team in the East with only one conference loss, but surprisingly, Kentucky is the only other team with just two losses. The problem for the Wildcats is one of those two losses is against Florida, in a game that really wasn't even that close. So they actually need the Gators to lose two more times. Now the good news for Kentucky is that is a realistic goal. Believe it or not, Kentucky can still actually weasel their way into the SEC championship game because Florida plays Arkansas, which is coming off a bye and should be a tough team, and LSU, which is one of the hottest teams in the country, and now for some reason that game is in Baton Rouge. They also have to play a South Carolina team that is really weird and just beat Tennessee, something that Florida couldn't even do. Kentucky still has Georgia and Tennessee left in SEC play, something that we would all have before the season been like, oh yeah, well those are losses, but maybe they're not really losses right now. Both teams obviously are struggling. And Georgia lost to Vanderbilt earlier in the year, a team that Kentucky beat. Could you imagine if Kentucky passes Florida and wins the SEC East? <laughs> and finally, the SEC West is about as simple as simple can be. Alabama's the number one team in the country. They're undefeated. They look basically unstoppable, but they have three one-loss teams sitting right below them, two of which they still have to play. Now, they do have Texas A&M, which only has one loss, but that one loss is to Alabama. They do still have to play LSU this weekend and finish the season against Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Obviously for Alabama, win out and you're in. As for Texas A&M, their path to Atlanta comes with probably LSU beating Alabama and then Auburn beating Alabama 
and then A&M beating LSU, and then they would have the one, one-on-one tiebreaker with Auburn with only one loss each. As for Auburn, they need LSU to beat Texas A&M, and then they have to beat Alabama. And I don't, it doesn't really matter whether Alabama or LSU wins. Auburn would have the head-to-head tiebreaker against either of those teams as the only one-loss West teams, and they will win and go to Atlanta. As for LSU, they obviously need to beat Texas A&M, which will drop them to two losses. They'll beat Alabama, which will drop them to one loss. And they need Alabama to beat Auburn to drop Auburn to two losses. The head-to-head with Alabama will get them to go to Atlanta. Now, there's four teams in the mix there, so there's probably some scenarios that I'm not really accounting for. So I need you to let me know about that down in the comments section. Now it's time for the national championship. Uh, I haven't done this eliminator all year long, so if I don't talk about a team, they're done. In my eyes, they are eliminated, and they have no shot at winning the national championship. I'm so sorry, Boise State. Now, the teams that I obviously think have a really good shot at winning this thing and getting into the playoffs are the four undefeated teams, Washington, Alabama, Clemson, and Michigan. Louisville, all my Big Ten teams. So you got Ohio State, Wisconsin, Nebraska, the Big 12 teams of West Virginia and Baylor, Florida, Auburn, LSU, and Western Michigan. Seriously. Now, for the four undefeated teams not named Western Michigan, It's as simple as it can be. Just win, baby. You win out. You go 13-0. You win your conference championship. Those are the four teams that will be in the playoff. There will be absolutely no controversy, and we will never get an 18 playoff ever. For Louisville, well, it's not looking great. Your schedule doesn't look as good as it once did before the season. Houston is falling off the radar, and there's a chance before you guys play the Cougars, they could actually lose yet another football game. Clemson is not going to lose two conference games to get you to Orlando to show out against probably Virginia Tech. So really, the rest of the way is not great for you. What you have to hope is that Alabama goes undefeated throughout the regular season and then loses to a two-loss East team that really drops them out and doesn't give the East team any more momentum to get into the playoff themselves. You would probably also need one of the other teams to lose. Uh, Clemson losing actually kind of weirdly hurts you. So you would need either Michigan or Washington to lose. There's a chance that Michigan's only loss would be against one of the other three teams that are already in the running. So Washington losing to a Pac-12 South team is probably the best way to go. Maybe have USC win the uh, South Division and beat Washington, a team they won't play this year. It's stretching it. There's probably a few other scenarios, but that's the best way I can think of to get in. Next up, Ohio State. And for the Buckeyes, it's simple. Beat Michigan. Obviously, this assumes you go undefeated, which means you will have beaten Michigan, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. Then, if you get into Indianapolis, you face off against one of those Big Ten West teams you've already beaten. You beat them again, maybe beat them a little bit bigger, You're the Big Ten champion. Your only loss was to a fluky game against Penn State, is what you would call it. And now you are in the top four. For the Aggies, well, it appears you're in. You're in the top four right now. But that is just the top four for right now. Best case scenario for you is that Alabama loses two more games, probably to LSU and to Auburn. So they drop off. If you are undefeated or undefeated the rest of the way rather that means you will have beaten LSU and you and Auburn will be sitting there on top of the east with one loss in the conference apiece giving you the tiebreaker to go into the conference championship game in Atlanta and beat what you hope is a top 10 Florida team whose only loss is still to Tennessee because the way it sits now with you ahead of Washington is not going to last if Washington is an undefeated conference champion they are absolutely going to take your place You have to get one of them to lose. If any of the other loses as well, you benefit just as much. And you may even sneak up into the third spot and kind of sit there. And the deliberations could be, well, your only loss was to Alabama. Even though you aren't a conference champion or division champion, you still deserve another shot. For Wisconsin, you need Nebraska to lose one more conference game, preferably to Ohio State. A team you took into overtime. Then you go into Indianapolis and you probably are rooting for Michigan to beat Ohio State. That way, you beat Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game and you claim you're the only team to beat Michigan. Michigan looked unstoppable all year long. 
They beat the team that beat you in overtime. You held Michigan to 14 points in the big house in the regular season, and then you beat them in the Big Ten Championship game. You have an excellent case to be one of the top four, even with two losses. Nebraska, great news. You control your own destiny. You beat Ohio State. You win out the rest of the way. You go 11-1. Get into the Big Ten Championship game against Michigan. Beat the Wolverines. Easier said than done. And you should be in. Easy peasy. Florida. You still play LSU. You play a good Arkansas team. You play a good Florida State team. You win out. You win the East. You go to Atlanta. And you upset number one and undefeated defending national champion Alabama. You're a one-loss SEC champion that beat mighty Alabama. You think you're in? I think you're in. Auburn. Have LSU lose to Alabama, but beat Texas A&M. That way, LSU and A&M both have two conference losses. Then you go into Tuscaloosa and beat number one and undefeated Alabama. And then you hope really, really hard that Florida went undefeated the rest of the way, and they're in the top ten. Then you beat a top ten Florida team in the SEC championship game, and you're basically in the tournament. Same basic concept for LSU. Beat Texas A&M, beat Alabama, hope Alabama beats Auburn, and hope that you play a Florida team that wasn't too decimated by your loss and is in the top 10 to 15 and beat them in Atlanta, deliver a statement in that game, and the SEC champion with only one loss, and that one loss is to an Auburn team that's probably still in the top 10 to 15, you're probably in. Baylor and West Virginia. Now, kind of lumping you both together here because you both have basically the same storyline in my eyes. Basically, you need to win out, which means you have to beat each other somehow. Uh, You have to win out, beat each other, beat Oklahoma, and then pray there's some chaos ahead of you. Now, I wrote this video kind of fleshing out where I, how I thought teams could do this before the committee rankings were released. But in all honesty, it's going to be really difficult because Baylor, I believe, is at 17 and West Virginia at 20 and Oklahoma's ahead of them. And there's a lot of teams ahead of them. And I'm not sure there's enough in the tank to get you to the top four. But basically, went out, hold on to the rails, and really, really hope that a 2007-like collapse happens around the country and just everyone starts losing. And then especially West Virginia, who lost to Oklahoma State, which is a good win, You have the best case over Baylor, especially if you beat Baylor. And finally, Western Michigan. Listen, well, listen, listen. Western Michigan is undefeated. Here's how you get in. First, you got to beat every team by 50 points, minimum. If they score 27, you got to score 77. Second, decide to overpay your PR department and get you moving on up in those college football playoff rankings. 23rd just ain't going to cut it. And last, hope between now and December 4th, every single child in America, when they wish happy birthday and they blow out the candles, they pray and they believe and they wish that you get a playoff berth, and as they do so, a shooting star is flying over their house. Listen, they're undefeated, it's my poll, it's my eliminator, please let's just have a little bit of fun, and just think for just a second how fun it would be for Western Michigan to get into the college football playoff and Michigan not. Holy crap, that'd be funny. So that's my very first crack at the Eliminator. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Who do you think is still in this thing that I left out? And who do you think that I included that really has no shot in hell at actually getting in the top four? Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can also click the red subscribe button right there. And you lose two of their three remaining ACC games and still stay in this thing. Question is, will they even lose one? Their three remaining ACC games are against Syracuse, Wake Forest, and Pittsburgh, and they will be favored in all three. But again, they can lose one and still be okay. If Louisville messes up and loses, which they almost did against Virginia this past weekend, they're done, and Clemson will basically clinch the ACC Atlantic not only in the national race, but 5-0 in ACC play. Now, the Tigers already have their two biggest hurdles out of the way, beating Louisville earlier in the season at home and beating Florida State this past weekend on the road in Tallahassee. What that means is Florida State got its third conference loss. They're done. Louisville is currently sitting at 5-1 in the conference, 
But Clemson at 5-0 and controls their own destiny. And in fact, can actually... Now, how I've decided this, it kind of depends. So for division titles, if you got three losses and there's like two undefeated teams in your division, you're done. You just are done right now that you don't really have a chance. If you're in the national championship picture and you are at like ranked 20th with two or three losses, you're probably done. You probably don't have a shot to get in the top four. And in fact, when I talk about the actual national championship worthy... Hey lifers, Dustin here. And today I'm excited to talk about my very first Eliminators video. As in who is actually eliminated from national championship consideration as well as conference and division titles. Now I've read blogs about teams that are eliminated for years now and I've just never thought of doing one myself but that changes during this between week 9 and week 10 of the 2016 season. Candidates, I'm going to expand the field a little bit. Some of them I already think are pretty much done but are just one loss or one other team losing away from being totally out of it. Now, with that being said, I'm going to start with the conferences first and talk about each division, and then I will do national championship at the very end, so make sure to stay tuned for that. We'll start in the ACC, and we'll start at the Atlantic Division, where number two ranked Clemson currently sits undefeated.